I'll be speaking today with Professor Giuseppe Mancia. Uh, Professor Mancia from Milan is this year's winner of the Council High Blood Pressure Excellence Research Award. Very, very distinguished award. Always very keenly contested and Giuseppe is an extremely worthy winner. And the title of his award lecture at this meeting will be uh, on white coat hypertension. So I would like to say hello, Giuseppe, and uh, and perhaps you could tell us uh, about some of your work on white coat hypertension. We started doing research uh, on white coat hypertension, which is the theme of my presentation. And the systematic research started uh, with a population study we devised uh, and uh, conducted in the Nordic outskirts of Milan, a population study, the Pamela study, which initially was aimed at providing normality values for ambulatory blood pressure. But the study had a number of unique features. Uh, each individual of the population had uh, measurements of office, home, and ambulatory blood pressure. Each individual had an echocardiogram, and that was a very long follow-up. And so it was suited to look at uh, this uh, condition, which began uh, to be of interest uh, in the medical community, white coat hypertension. And we were able to collect a number of novel data, prevalence, uh, which is very high, and then the fact that, uh, contrary to what was believed, uh, it is not a clinically innocent condition because it has uh, people having this have uh, quite frequently organ damage, uh, they have metabolic risk factors, they have a greater risk of moving to establish hypertension and even a new onset diabetes, and they have a risk of having cardiovascular events in the long run. Uh, which is less than those having true hypertension, but definitely greater than the truly normotensive subjects. We're continuing, uh, unfortunately, being an observational study, Pamela is not suited to answer a final, very important question, which is, shall we treat this condition or not? Uh, we were able to get uh, blood pressure data from uh, another trial, another study, which was the ELSA study, but this remains a very important, outstanding question. The findings are really revolutionary, I know. The white coat hypertension often has just been thought of as a nuisance, but clearly there's a lot more to it than that. If I could just uh, shift pace for a moment, I know that in your early days, you worked in USA on experimental medicine. What, what influence did that have on you? For 15 uh, years of my working life, uh, I only did, uh, or almost only did, uh, experimental research in animals. Uh, uh, first in Milan, under uh, a very uh, important mentor, Professor Alberto Zanchetto, in which we studied uh, the hemodynamic changes during sleep and during emotional behavior. And then uh, at the Mayo Clinic in the United States, when uh, I studied uh, the cardiovascular reflex control by receptors in the heart and lungs. Uh, these were really very important uh, days for me because uh, um, I just learned doing research, and particularly in the United States, uh, I was very lucky because I met with uh, incredibly good mentors, Professor Shepard and Professor Donald. They were not only extremely good at research, but very generous. I mean, I learned a lot from them, and this is, of course, extremely important in the early working life of uh, an investigator. And in addition, of course, the studies on uh, 
cardiopulmonary receptor control of the circulation were new and they showed for the first time that there is indeed a powerful control of the circulation, in particular renal circulation and renal release from these volume receptors, which provide a sort of homeostatic uh, control of uh, blood volume. And when I came back in Milan, I was capable, I was able to replicate some of these data in uh, humans uh, and uh, it was just about the same very powerful control of blood volume uh, in pneumotensive and hypertensive humans and this stems uh, from the heart mainly and this we were able to demonstrate by looking at the absence of these reflexes in uh, people with the heart uh, transplantation thank you very very important work Cardiopulmonary centers, uh, uh, centers and reflexes help us all stand up, of course. Uh, just to extend things a little, um, you've made so many contributions. Is the one that you're proudest of? It's well, uh, perhaps the, the latest ones uh, are those uh, you like most. In the last uh, 15 years, for example, I moved to an area which was uh, uh, alien to me, and this is a real life research, uh, taking advantage, first of all, of a, a great collaborator, a very good statistician, Professor Corral, and the fact that he had access to a very important database in Lombardy all uh, citizens from Lombardy, about 11 million people, in which uh, there is a detail, uh, uh, you can have detailed information on treatments they're taking, hospitalization, causes of hospitalization, of course, uh, uh, number of deaths and so forth. And this has led us to a number of studies on adherence to treatment, uh, therapeutic inertia, and these are area of very great interest today because we realize that we can have the best drugs in the world as far as hypertension, diabetes, or dyslipidemias are concerned. But if uh, people uh, do not take them or if uh, physicians do not step up treatment until uh, there is a control of these risk factors, of course, uh, results are quite poor. And uh, using this database, we were able, uh, only a few months ago, uh, based also on a very interesting paper published by you, uh, Murray, in the journal Hypertension, on the possible relationship between uh, very common drugs, life-saving drugs, uh, such as uh, blockers of the renal angiotensin system, uh, and the COVID infection, to look at uh, whether people with the COVID-19 infection were taking uh, uh, these drugs before the infection, and these drugs could modify the risk of the severity of the disease. And we had a lot of people to look at, of course, and the final uh, conclusion from this study was that no, uh, these drugs uh, are used more frequently, but this is a reflection of the fact that uh, sicker people and uh, these drugs means uh, that you are sicker because you have hypertension or heart failure or some other diseases. Sicker people get the infection more easily, but there is no reason to conclude that, that uh, these drugs have uh, a specific effect on the risk of the infection or the severity and lethality of the infection. I know that research too well. You proved me wrong. <laughs> I thought the drugs might be a problem. <laughs> you found the truth. Well, this was the hypothesis, which of course was, uh, you know, very important because people were scared and they started stopping treatment. And we know the stopping life-saving treatment is accompanied by an adverse rebound for the risk of cardiovascular events. I had one final important question for you. And what advice might you give to a young clinician, a clinician scientist starting their research career? What might you tell them? Well, I, of course, I'm biased by my, my experience. Uh, my experience has been that you do need great mentors, first of all. This is the crucial thing. 
great mentors and generous mentors those that can really they can they really love to teach people and having people growing in research and i was lucky because both in milan in my early years and then in the united states i did have great mentors of course you also have to be lucky the areas of research you pick up uh, uh, must be in a way productive areas and you never know in research uh, you may come to a blind alley sometimes but uh, uh, this happened to me but not so often fortunately thank you very much now i should say to everybody make sure you catch professor manchu's lecture i've been privileged to see all his powerpoint slides and it will be a real knockout talk thank you thank you thank you Mary. thank you